And candidate for Secretary General of the UN 2021, Aurora Akanksha, joins us now live from New York. Welcome to the programme. Hello from Istanbul. Um, now, this Thank is so such a huge uh, goal and you're only 34. Um, what inspired you to want to be the next UN Secretary General? Um, I'm inspired because I believe in the UN. I know UN is capable of doing so much great work in the world, but the UN of today is failing. Let me give you a couple examples. Like you said, we have the highest number of refugees and displaced people, stateless people in the world today, 85 million. For every dollar the UN gets, 30 cents is used for the cause. When it comes to climate, for every dollar, we get 15 cents is used for nature-based solution, and rest goes into bureaucracy of holding conferences and writing reports. And when it comes to climate, which is an existential threat for us, what's there to talk about? It's really time to act. And development, which is another of UN's mandate, over the last 40 years, they've used a top-down regonomics approach of giving money to the top and hoping it will tickle down. No country has developed out of UN assistance. So at this stage in the world after COVID, we cannot go back to old ways of doing things. We need a new UN. We need a UN that's responsive, not just to governments, but also to people in the world, also to private sector and NGOs. We need a UN that includes everyone, that gives opportunities for everyone to develop and progress. And we need a UN that can be led by a new generation. Mm -hmm. The UN of today, average leadership age is 62. The world, half of the world is under 30, majority is under 35. Okay. We haven't, we don't have representation. You make lots of uh, valid points there, Aurora. And, you know, we're in Turkey. Uh, the Turkish president himself has often said that uh, the UN needs to be reformed. Um, but specifically, where would you start? What is your vision for the UN? Uh, I'm so glad that all leaders are on the same page when it comes to reforming the UN. I think I just want to set context that there are two UNs. There's a UN that makes decisions, Security Council, General Assembly, Economic and Social Commission, and there's a UN that's responsible for implementing of all, all these decisions, which is headed by the Secretary General, responsible for the Secretariat that's made up of 100 entities responsible for more than 50 billion of the budget. The innovation that I want to see in the UN is we need to take our decisions and implement them all the way through. I want to focus on addressing the refugee crisis. I want to address climate through nature-based solution investments. I want to usher a new generation of youth into working at the UN. I want to invest in development through internet, universal internet and universal education. And, you know, I just want to really see, you know, what do you think that you could do differently to Antonio Guterres or the other, I believe it's seven secretary generals that have come before him? Eight, eight secretary eight. generals Thank have come before him. Thank you for correcting him. me, yes. yes. It, Sorry, he's the ninth secretary general. I think what's different is that when, I, I think just a bit of context, when the UN Charter was created, the founding document was League of Nations Covenant. And one of the things that our founders realized is for UN to be successful and not have a demise like League of Nations, we need a body and a person responsible for implementation, which is why the role of secretary general is chief administrative officer. So what I would do differently compared to all the nine is I would focus on implementation. The first thing is we need to make sure our resources are used efficiently. Instead of 30 cents going to the cause, we should have 70 cents going to the cause. Um, instead of having our business model being holding conferences, writing reports and talking, we need to implement and deliver. We need to empower young and engage them beyond donation and advocacy and make UN potentially the largest employers. Climate, we're not going to solve climate crisis alone. We need to invest in climate entrepreneurs to do things differently. We need to give people the tools, which is internet and education to succeed instead of giving it to institutions and hoping that they would benefit people. Mm -hmm. um, and your specific questions are what I would do differently. I think the profile of this, of the role of SG has always been given to one type of people who are politicians and who view the job as talking. I view the job as doing and showing the results in our outcome. Today, we don't have anything that we've made dents in that we're proud of, other than the fact that we advertise quite extensively to what we are, but we haven't produced the results. And do you think that your lack of diplomatic experience and your age would be a disadvantage at some levels? Um, I would say, like you said in your opening, diplomacy is not just by having a title. Diplomacy is something that we all exhibit in our day-to-day -day lives as humans. Like having been born in India, raised in Saudi, and then Canada, I understand different perspectives. I bring a global view to all problems and empathy, and I think that allows me to bring 
uh, a respect and appreciation for different cultures, different ideas, and to realize not every um, a solution that fits in West will not necessarily fit in the Middle East or Asia. And my age is a huge advantage. Today, Myanmar uh, crisis, most of the people who have died are Gen Zs and millennials. We are, we are the ones who are absolutely passionate about the world and making our difference, and we are unafraid, and we bring a fresh perspective to problems okay. that need to be addressed in innovative and ways. And Aurora, that is, you know, my next question, and the one that really pains me the most as a journalist, because we, we're here day after day talking about these crises, talking about uh, awful things that, uh, you know, where people are calling for UN intervention. You know, Absolutely. how would you maybe stop the situation in Myanmar, for example? Um, I have to give um, UN one credit that they are at least as soon as uh, the coup happened on Feb 1st, like there have been constant conversations about Myanmar in the Security Council and in the um, and in media in general as well. What I would do differently is, I wonder why we haven't called a meeting with the junta, why we haven't like mobilized the regional players, China, India, and others to have a conversation instead of even taking it at the ASEAN level. So that is something I would do differently because diplomacy is all about having a conversation. We cannot condemn them through social media. We cannot keep issuing report after report we need to engage in a conversation with them, give them a way out, show, give them a way to sh save their face and give, um, give the leadership back to the democratically elected government. It's been great to speak to you, Aurora Akanksha, candidate for Secretary General of the United Nations 2021. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you.